Kasi we respect the human rights advocates. Kailangan natin sila. Pero yung iba, na drug lords, na gustong siraan ng Pangulo, o gustong tuloy ang kalang negosyo, yung iba na politika, na hindi matanggap, na meron tayong Pangulo, na katulad ni President Duterte, are they loosely using the word extrajudicial killing to discredit the PNP and the Duterte administration? <clears throat> Sa resolution pa lang po ng ating kasama, na si Senator Leila de Lima, makikita niyo po, the recent rampant extrajudicial killings and summary killings of suspected criminals. I reviewed po, marami sa atin nilalagay ng alleged, kasi niimbestigahan mo pa lang eh. Pero sa kanya po, siya mag-chair, siya nangunguna sa hearing, pero hindi lang sa papel na to, pero sa maraming interview, hindi niya tatanggapin na hindi ito summary killing or extrajudicial killing. Next slide. This effort to discredit the president has reached the international news. In fact, dahil walang suporta dito sa ating bansa, of course, nire-report kailangan gawin ng ating mga kapatid sa media, pero people feel safe eh. Nararamdaman ng taong pagbabago eh. Dati ang takot tao, ang uh, hindi takot, kriminal. Ngayon ang kriminal takot, ang tao, ang mamamayan, hindi po takot. They feel safe. Or at least they're beginning to feel safe. Kaya kung makikita niyo po yan, Time Magazine, yung pong uh, South China Sea Post, eh grabe po ang mga article at pinapalabas po yung nangyayari sa ating bansa, parang wild wild west, parang kahit sino pwede patayin. Ang difference lang po dyan sa Huffington Post, kasi po yung isang nakatira doon sa ibang bansa, hindi na makapagpigil, ipinaliwanag niya na iba ang nangyayari sa Pilipinas at iba ang nero-report sa ibang bansa. Next slide. Tingnan po natin yung interview kagabi po sa ating pong kasamahan na si Senator De Lima. The President and his supporters say that there are just as many people were killed under the Arroyo and Aquino uh, administrations. Is that true? Uh, that is not true. If Senator Cayetano refers to both the Arroyo and Aquino administration, then we're looking at a period of more than 10 years. That's nine years of uh, Arroyo and six years of that. The president and his supporters say that there are just as many people were killed under the Arroyo and Aquino uh, administrations. Is that true? Uh, that is not true. If Senator Cayetano refers to both the Arroyo and Aquino administration, then we're looking at a period of more than 10 years. That's nine years of uh, Arroyo and six years of Aquino. And then we have two months of the Duterte administration and there are a little over 2,000 already killed in the name of, uh, in the name of this war against drugs. Let me play. Mr. President, hindi po sana ako ma-offend na sinisiraan tayo internationally or hindi ko sasabihin sana na minimislead ni Senator De Lima ang international community, ang publiko sa numero kung hindi tayo nagkaroon ng hearing. Sa hearing po, hindi ko po pinagsama yung nine years at six years. Inabridge ko po monthly. And Mr. President, Narinig niyo sa sarili niyang bibig. Sabi niya, 2,000 na daw ang patay sa pangalan ng drug war. Bakit po? Eh kasi po lahat ng patay, sinasama po niya at charge to Duterte. Para bang sa isang restaurant po, na isa lang ang mesa ng Pangulo, pero lahat po nung nasa restaurant ay sumigaw ng Duterte-Duterte, kaya ibibigay yung resibo sa presidente, siya na magbabayad sa lahat. Bakit po ganon? 2,000. Nireport naman po ng ating uh, PNP kung ilan, less than 800 po at that time, ang patay because of legitimate PNP or law enforcement operation. Kung may tanong kung legitimate yung iba, that's fair. Pero po yung dalawang libo, so kahit sino na lang po na patay dahil may love triangle, patay po dahil away sa wedding, away sa utang, patay po dahil nagpustahan sa basketball, 
at ilagay lang po ng karatula, drug war, at charge na po kay Duterte at sa drug war yan. Next slide, please. Tignan po natin para hindi tayo malito lahat. Sa bidig na po mismo ng dalawa pong nangunguna sa investigasyon na to, kung ano ba talaga ang definition ng extrajudicial killing. Kasi po, baka tayo nagkakalituhan sa definition. Uh, importante nga po talaga na linawin kung anong sakop ng extrajudicial killings. At ang sigurong pwede nating uh, paghugutan uh, nito ay yung <clears throat> report ng Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Killings, si Philip Alston, uh, nung siya ay bumisita dito. Uh, may sampung taon nang nakaraan. Ang sabi po ni Philip Alston uh, sa kanyang report ay ang extrajudicial killing ay any killing by government forces as well as the killing by any other groups or individuals which the government failed to investigate, prosecute, and punish when it is in a position to do so. Tamo, Mr. President, sabi niya, hinugot niya kay Philip Alston yung kanyang definition. Talagang itong kaibigan natin na si Chairman Gascon may pinaghuhugutan talaga. Kaya talagang galit na galit sa ating Pangulo. The reality is there was neither the same number or even more... The reality, Mr. President, or ang katotohanan, there is the same number of murder or homicides or even less in a monthly average during the Arroyo Aquino and the Duterte time. Ulitin ko po. Kung ang patay ngayon dalawang libo sa isang buwan, dalawang buwan, that's 1,000 a month, ganun din po nung panahon ni Presidente Aquino. Isang libo mahigit ang patay buwan-buwan. Pero dahil mas mabait magsalita ang ating dating Pangulo, mas politically correct, wala sa front page at wala po sa mga pahayagan around the world kung ilan ang patay. Pero ngayon po, lahat ng patay, para bang ang Pangulo natin may ari ng lahat ng puneralya sa ating bansa, charge parati po lahat kay President Duterte. Let's look at the figures. Sir President, sa ibabaw galing sa PNP, 2010, 12,352 patay. Hindi po ordinary yan na patay po. Homicide at saka murder. 2013, at the peak, 16,160. Yan po ang source po niyan, PNP. Sa iba ba po, baka sabihin nyo, baka dinoktor ng PNP. PSA, sa Philippine Statistics Authority po, 2010, 12,622. 2013, 15,481. 2015, 12,478. May konting discrepancy pero magkakadikit. Siguro po, baka sa NSO natin makikita sa death certificate uh, kung sakali kung ano ang pinaka-accurate. But what's my point, Mr. President? An average of 35 to 45 deaths a day. Ang kaibahan po, nung araw, ang napapatay ang mga biktima ng dugista. No? Hindi lang po death, ha? murder and homicide. Ang number murder, ang napapatay by a crime, yung po mga inosente. Ngayon po, yung 700 sa legitimate PNP operations, eto po mga pusher. Yung sa labas po ng legitimate, hindi ko po alam. At tingin ko po, wala sa kwarto to makakaalam. Yung pumatay po ba dyan ay kapwa drug lord? Kasi baka magkumanta na at ayaw din magpahuli. Yung po ba ay uh, love triangle? Yung po ba ay utang? Yung po ba ay sabog lang? Kaya nag-away. Next slide please. Pero kung makikita nyo po, nung Aquino administration, naglabas po ng AO Order 35, Administrative Order 35, dinefine po nila kung ano ang extrajudicial killing. Next slide po. Makikita nyo po na sinabi dito, for the purpose of the focused mandate of AO 35, killings related to common crimes and or the perpetration of their crimes shall be addressed by other appropriate mechanisms within the justice system. So to be convenient during the Aquino administration, pag ordinary crimes, pag droga, ay hindi kasama sa extrajudicial uh, killings yan. Pero pagdating sa Duterte, ba, eh kapag ka droga, kasama yan. Next slide. Ayan po mismo, sa kanilang sariling definition, the victims were members of affiliated with an organization to include political, environmental, agrarian, labor, similar cases, an advocate of the above, 
media practitioner. In other words, Mr. President, uh, ikaw po ay member ng cost-oriented group, aktivista ka against coal, against mining, uh, aktivista ka na journalist, uh, investigative journalist ka. No? Pag may nangyari sa'yo at napatay ka, dyan ka babaksak. But let me ask our journalist today, let me ask our labor activist, our environmental activist, don't you feel safer today than six years ago? Next slide. Yan po ang pinapakita ng Aquino administration or ni Senator De Lima abroad sa report nila na total 394 lang ang extrajudicial killing sa panahon nila. Bakit po? Eh, hindi ba nila yung definition eh? Pag sila naglaro, ang gusto nila, rules ng volleyball. Pag tayo naglaro, rules ng basketball. Tapos, banat ng banat, ang problema, Mr. President, mga kababayan, our colleagues, kung ang Pangulo lang po ang nasisira, I let him speak for himself. Ang problema po, isa tayo sa pulelat pagdating sa turismo eh. Nagwa-work hard ang Department of Tourism, nagwa-work hard po ang iba't ibang ahensya ng gobyerno, dumami ang turista, tapos palalabasin po natin sa ibang bansa na hindi safe sa atin, na grabe ang patayan. Samantalang mga OFWs mismo ang nagsasabi na mas safe na ngayon ang kanilang pamilya. So I have a question to Mr. Gascon, Chairman Gascon. Why are you destroying the image of the Philippines? Why are you inviting trade sanctions from the EU? Hindi po ako antay Aquino. Hindi po ako galit sa dilaw as a general rule. Some of my best friends are members of the Liberal Party. My seatmates are members of the Liberal Party. We've worked together in important bills. We recognize the contribution of President Benigno or Pinoy, as he wants to be called, on our economy. But Mr. Gascon, nagagawa mo naman trabaho mo dito, i-involve mo pa EU, European Union. Ano po sabi niya? The GSP Plus system is anchored and based almost fully and significantly in compliance with certain international standards. Human rights standards, labor standards, and environmental standards. Question, Mr. Gascon. Sa environment muna. Eh, yung mga power plant, lalo yung coal, yung mga minahan, hindi ba mas mahigpit ngayon sa Duterte administration? To the point na yung mga kapitalista, ang mga may-ari ng kumpanya, ay nagsasabi na nga na ridiculous na, masyado na mahigpit, mas mahigpit pa sa pinakamahigpit na world standard. So, sa environmental, better tayo. Labor standards, naghiring na kaagad. Si Senator Joel Binalueva, pagdating sa contractualization sa ENDO, ang civil service po, nagsalita na kahapon sa contractualization sa gobyerno. Ang atin pong Pangulo at atin, at atin Labor Secretary Bello, kumilos ka agad. So, two out of three, labor, environmental, huwag mo naman sabihin mo, hindi tayo mas magaling. So, dapat siguro, sinabi ni Mr. Gascon, EU, increase trade with the Philippines. Pero anong pinukul niya po? Human rights standards. Now, let me now test whether tama o mali yung sinabi po ni Mr. Gascon. Next slide. Ito po, extrajudicial killings remains biggest rights problem under Aquino. It's the U.S. report. But I did not blame President Aquino. I supported him. Hindi madali to get rid of extrajudicial killings, killings ng media. Di ba? Next slide. Interagency body, Human Rights Watch, said the same thing. I did not criticize President Aquino. I supported him because I saw he was moving in the judiciary, in the DOJ, etc., to address all of this. Si Mr. Gascon ba nagsalita nung panahon na yan? Sinabi ba niya, EU, tigilan niyo yung ibang trade with uh, President Aquino. O oh, yung upgrade, wag muna kasi may problema sa human rights. Hindi po, tahimik siya nun. Pero Mr. President, ano po ba talaga ang nakalagay sa International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights? Ito po nakalagay. Every human being has the inherent right to life. May karapatan po mabuhay ang bawat tao. The right shall be protected by law. No one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his life. Underline, arbitrarily. Bakit po? Next slide. Ito po ang dinidiscuss po ng mga experts on human rights at ipropropose po nila dito sa convention na yung definition ng arbitrary. Although it is, it, 
inheres in every human being by virtue of membership in the human family, the right to life is not absolute. By requiring that the, the deprivations of life must not be arbitrary in nature, Article 6, Paragraph 1 implicitly recognizes that some deprivations of life may be justified in some cases. Minsan po may dahilan kung bakit kukunin ang isang buhay. Ano po yung example? Use of lethal force against a person who poses an immediate threat to the lives of others when no other less harmful means of protection are or could have been available does not prima facie constitute an arbitrary deprivation of life. Ibig sabihin po, police, na makikipagbarilan po sa isang drug lord. Mamimili siya buhay niya o buhay ng drug lord. Siyempre, pipiliin niya buhay niya. At yan po ay hindi violation ng Article 6 Right of Life sa International Convention. Next slide. Sir President, I also want to take note of this because this will be discussed, I think, next month in the, in the conventions. And this has been, ito po ay diniscussed for the last, uh, is it 10 or 20 years. All human rights are universal, indivisible, and interdependent and interrelated. Ibig sabihin po, puti ka man, item, kayo manggi, ikaw po man ay in check, hapon, Pilipino, Amerikano, may karapatan ka sa buhay. Ngunit, the international community must treat human rights globally in a fair and equal manner, on the same footing, and with the same emphasis. While the significance of national and regional particularities and various historical, cultural, and religious backgrounds must be borne in mind. It is the duty of the states, regardless of their political, economic, and cultural systems, to promote and protect all human rights and fundamental freedoms. Ang parati pong nagbabanggit niyan, Singapore. Singapore po, grabe po ang peace and order. Grabe po ang katahimikan sa droga. Pero parati silang tinutulik sa, sa human rights. Pero sabi po nila, we are Asians. Iba kultura namin. Kasi po, sa ibang bansa, sa ibang mundo, recreational yung ibang drugs eh. Iba din ang droga na gamit nila. I won't go into that discussion right now, Mr. President. Ang ibig ko lang po sabihin, Wag naman tayo husgahan ng ibang uh, bansa sa kanilang kultura. Kasi meron tayong sarili nating kultura, sarili nating paniniwala. Ngunit kasama sa ating paniniwala, the sanctity of life. Next slide. Dati po, ang tao ang takot. Ang kriminal hindi. Dati po, ang kriminal may barel kahit saan pwede pumasok, kahit saan pwede pumunta. Ang tao... Hindi pwede sa madilim, sa gabi, ingat, pag nakasakay ng jeep, pag nagko-commute, tago yung mga valuables. Ngayon po, nagbago na. Ang mga kriminal ang takot, and people are beginning to feel safe. Next slide. Why are we accusing the Duterte administration for being responsible for extrajudicial killings? Si Duterte ba ang kanyang administrasyon ang may kasalanan sa lahat ng patayan? First point. There is equal number, if not less, na patay ngayon. Next slide. Let us ask the two again, kung sino ang nasisisi. Uh, human rights defenders and environmentalists, his definition actually covers the scenario that we are currently facing as well. The key component is that we should show that the state is doing everything it can to prevent this phenomenon from becoming a practice. Okay, two points, Mr. President. Unang-una, bago nagsalita si Chairman Gascon nun, lahat ng witness ay nagsabi na ang kanilang kaso ay iniimbestigahan. In fact, yung unang witness, kinasuhan na ng murder ang dalawang police. So sa sariling definition ni Mr. Gascon, failed to, to investigate, prosecute, and punish. Paano na fail? E niimbestigahan na nga ng CHR. Inimbestigahan na nga ng polis. Facing murder na nga at iniimbestigahan ng Senado. Pero ano sabi ni Mr. Gascon? Kasama daw sa definition yung nangyayari ngayon. Failed to prosecute and punish. Mr. Gascon, and to our colleagues, malabo naman ata. Yun ang, ang kinote nila. Ayan, no? Extrajudicial killing is any killing by government forces as well as the killing by any other groups or individual which the government failed to investigate prosecute and punish. 
Hindi po yan nangyayari ngayon. Next slide please. Pakinggan po natin ang ating Pangulo. Ano ang kanyang policy pagdating po sa pag-iimbestiga at pang-aabuso po ng pulis? To our police officers and other officials, do your job and you will have the unwavering support of the office of the President. I will be with you all the way. Abuse your authority and there will be a hell to pay. In this quest, I will put at stake my honor, my life, and the presidency itself. The DLG is also directed to strictly monitor how LGUs perform their supervision functions over the police. And those found that the performing will be sanctioned, including the loss of police deputation from the Napolcom. Let me repeat my warning to all. <coughs> I repeat, my repeat, my repeat to all, do not do drugs. Because you will be the solution to the drug crisis that has in, in, in Gulf, Malawa, Tunisia. Mr. President, malinaw, sabi ng Pangulo, monitor, LGU, PNP. Ang LGU, hindi kasama po ng PNP yan, pwede magsumbong. Sinabi po niya sa mga polis, hindi pwedeng may, abuso, may uh, abuso. Sinabi niya, he will stake his honor. Hindi lang sa mga lalabanan sa droga, pati yung umabuso ng mga polis. Because the President is not only anti-drugs, he is for law and order. In fact, earlier on, the PNP issued a memorandum saying na yung mga vigilante killings ay hindi nila pinapayagan at lahat ng report of vigilante killings kailangan seven days meron pong investigasyon at report. So, Mr. Gaston, saan yung sinasabi mong hindi pinapansin, hindi iniimbestigahan, hindi pinaprosecute? Next. Even the Supreme Court dahil nabahala na rin sila at marami tayong kagalang-galang na mga justices, na mga human rights advocates, nagpapasalamat kami sa kanila sa kanilang pag-form ng human rights violation ng isang body to look into human rights violations. Bakit po? Next slide. Because under the Alston definition, the Lima and Gascon's definition, The question has to be asked, are these deaths extrajudicial killings? Next slide. The answer is a big no. And that's why we take the Supreme Court, because they are part of the state. Pag sinabi ni Mr. Gascon, Chairman Gascon, Chairperson Gascon, at sinabi ni Senator De Lima, that the state is not investigating, prosecuting, kasama tayo doon, Mr. President. Duterte is not the state. The presidency is not the state. We are a presidential form of government. There are checks and balances. Pag may problema yung executive, nandiyan yung legislative, nandiyan yung judiciary. Kaya nga may impeachment eh. Kaya nga merong kasuhan, may prosecution. Kaya nga may ombudsman. Ayun po. The state includes all of us. Executive, legislative, judiciary, CHR. Kasama po yan. Next slide. There is no national outrage regarding the drug war. Bakit po? Eh, alam naman po na ang tinatarget po talaga ang nagwebenta ng droge. Hindi naman tinatarget ang inosente. At alam naman po na yung mga sumurender are tra treated humanely. But there is an international effort to discredit the Duterte administration. Makikita niyo po ang statement ni Senator De Lima. 
killings may lead to charges of crimes against humanity. Ang bigat naman. Isasama mo si Duterte, crimes against humanity. May mga kinakasuhan dyan, mga madmen eh. Mga kinakasuhan dyan, genocide. Pero ganyan po ang statement niya while she is chairing a hearing and saying that she can be neutral. How can you be neutral, Mr. President, pag yan sinabi mo? Pero Mr. President, tanong muna, why are we involving the ICC in the drug war in the Philippines? International Criminal Court. Gusto nyo ba na ang Pangulo mahati ang atensyon? Kaso niya abroad? At yung drug na problema dito? Gusto ba natin itigil ang laban uh, sa droga? But a second question, Mr. President, kasi akala nung iba, ang ICC, parang MTC, RTC, CA, Supreme Court, Sandigan Bayan. Hindi po. Tignan po natin ang rules ng international ng ICC. The case is being investigated or prosecuted by a state which has jurisdiction over it unless the state is one willing or unable to genuinely carry out the investigation or prosecution. Rome Statute Article 7-A, Issue of Admissibility. Alam po ng lahat ng abogado, pag hindi admissible, 